James Lupton joined with Buddy McGirt. We are approaching fight week for your new charge, Callum Smith. Uh, he's fighting Lenin Castillo on the undercard of Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk. His first fight at light heavyweight. How's he been in camp so far? I can honestly tell you I have no complaints. Everything is, you know, it took us a while to get adjusted. It took me a while to really see what I have to work on, or what we have to work on, I should say. But all in all, it's been great. How's it been on CC? It's very new to you. He's coming, he's already been a world champion. He's taken to bring a fighter over who's been with somebody, his whole career, Joe Gallagher, from debut to world cyclist. How is it to take over and what is there? Is there, is there anything or is there a lot to change? It's, not, it's really, it's not a lot to change, but you want to change the things that make sense to him, you know? And then what happens is if you do something that makes sense, then everything else is going to fall in place. You, you know what I mean? So you get little things that he's like, yeah, you know what? I do have a problem with that. Or I do see that. So then you work on that. Once you get that work and everything else is just going to fall in place. How, how's he looking at in terms of the weight? He's moving up to light heavyweight, 175 pounds. It'll be his first fight at the division. How's he sort of handled the move up and holding the weight? To be honest, we haven't even discussed it. You know, um, he looks like a cruiserweight, you know what I mean, when you stand next to him. So that we really haven't discussed, you know, one time when we first started training, he says for the last couple of years, 168 was killing him. How much difference does that make to a fighter when they are struggling so much to make weight? It, 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 it can be the difference of night and day. Of course, now mentally you're like, I don't, I don't have to kill myself. I'm not going to be weak. You know, when you struggle to make weight sometimes, then you make it, and then you wonder, okay, now, am I going to have enough energy? Is this going to give me enough energy to go 12 rounds? You know, a lot of things go through your mind, but when you don't have to do that, I mean, that's gone. So, you mean, that, that just gives you that extra confidence. Does your mindset change going into a fight when you have boiled down so much to make weight? Change as far as what? In terms of your, your confidence. Like you say, you're worried, are you going to... Oh, your confidence goes to another level. Because you, you know, you're, you're comfortable now. You're, you're, you, uh, you know that you, you can go those 12 rounds if need be. You're not worrying about, damn, did those last two pounds take you know, the last two rounds out of me? You know, so there's a lot of things that would go through your mind are not there now. Fantastic. Um, in terms of his opponent, Lenny Castillo, do you know much about him? No. Do you, do you watch any footage of the no. opponents during camp? Why not? Some, some of us do, some don't. Why for yourself? The fighters do, and they tell me what they see, and I go from there. Well, why, why do you use that method? Why does it work for you? Because my job is to prepare you for any and everything. If you see one thing and you focus on that one thing, and then the guy doesn't do it, then what do you do? So you prepare for any and everything. Now, there's times, you know, uh, he would say to me, well, the guy likes to do this. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, let's do something for that. So our goal is not to worry about what he's going to do to us, but to make him worry about what we're going to do to him. For yourself, see, we know you've been, you've been coached to Sergey Kovalev, like headway as well. Do you have the same sort of methods for guys who are in the same weight class, or is it tailored to everybody that you coach? It's, it, it depends on that, because some guys can't do what other guys can, you know what I mean? So you have to sit back and watch them and study them, and you, you know, it's going to take maybe a week, maybe take two weeks to see, okay, this is what's going to work. In order to get this to work, I got to make this work. Once I get this working, bam, we got it, you know what I mean? If you try this, this ain't going to work. So you got to get this to get that. You know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's crazy, but it's work. You know what I mean? So at night when I come back from the gym, I sit in, in, in the room. Or when I'm home, I sit home and I think. I could be watching a TV show, but I'm thinking. Then boom, then it click. Bam, this is, this is what we can do to get the, this result. You trained many world champions. Callum is trying to be a two-weight world champion. Um, do you see the hunger in Callum to do that and achieve his goal? Yes. Yes, and, I, and, and uh, you know, I noticed that from day one. You know what I mean? Uh, his work ethic. You know, he just doesn't go through the motions. You know, when he's in there, he's working. So you can see that fire in their eyes. You mentioned you see the hunger from day one. We've spoken before about why you train a fighter, why you bring someone into the gym. What was it with 
Callum that made you say, yes, I'll be your coach? I always thought he could fight. I mean, uh, I'd seen him fight. I had seen him fight only fight once. But I, I, I said, this guy could fight. You know, and I used to train his brother, Paul. You know what I mean? So, but I knew he could fight. And Paul used to always tell me, hey, keep an eye on my brother. He can fight, man. You know what I mean? He goes, watch Callum. And um, he was right. He can fight. Was, was it Paul, Paul's um, influence on yourself? Did, did he bring you and Callum together? Or how did this, how did the link up happen? I was in London with Chisora. And uh, Paul called me and said, uh, are you busy this weekend? I said, no. He goes, well, can you come? I want to talk to you about my brother. I said, sure. And uh, then I came down. We worked for two days. And then I went back. And here we are. Absolutely. Um, in terms of the show as well, obviously, a big show, Joshua Usyk. Um, don't really get much better than that on the UK show so this year. Um, do you see any pressure on Cam to perform well at his debut at the end of it? Well, I think the pressure is going to come. I don't really think it's pressure. I mean, a lot of people are looking to see how he's going to come back from the Canelo fight and moving up. But we don't talk about it. We don't. We don't talk about it, and we don't dwell on it. We just uh, get ready, like we're fighting for a world title. Have you spoken about the Canelo kind of fight? And have you spoken about what he's learned? Not, not one bit. He hasn't mentioned it, and I haven't mentioned it. It's the past. So you leave the past in the past. Is that the, in your opinion, is that the best way to do it for a fighter? Have, is that how you do it? Like, everyone's different, like I say. You know what I mean? Some fighters, if it bothers them, they're going to bring it up to you. They're going to want to, they might tell you something they didn't tell somebody else. So you sit back and you listen. You know what I mean? And, uh, and um, that's it. He, never, he didn't bring it up. I don't bring it up. Do you think it's a good thing that he's not? Recapped over it with yourself. Yeah, it's a good. He, I guess he's, he put it behind him and he's moving forward. Moving forward, absolutely. Um, we mentioned as well, his goal is to be two weight world champion at light heavyweight. Who's the target? Who do you feel he could mix it with at a top level? And how long? Any, he still, he, any of them. How, how long until he can mix it with the champions? Uh, next week. Yeah. Yeah. When he's ready. Yeah. So in terms of come fight night, Saturday night. Well, I'm just looking for the victory. How we get it, I don't care. You know, I don't like to make predictions. I just want him to go out and do what he does and get that W. For yourself as a coach, when you have a new fighter in their first fight under your tutelage, do you want them to get the rounds in, or is it like you say, just get the victory anyway? Get the victory anyway. I don't care if it's a, if it's 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 10 rounds, 12 rounds. Let's just get the victory, and then we we'll move on. Absolutely. Um, let's mention the main event, Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk. A very intriguing matchup at heavyweight. With that one, who do you give the advantage to? Is Usyk too small at heavyweight? I think it's going to be a very interesting fight. I think it's going to be a very calculative, you know, mind fight. Both guys are going to be very smart. No one's going to rush in and try to overwhelm the other guy. You know, Usyk is very elusive, very smart. You know, Joshua, you know, he can sit back and play smart as well. Even though he's a big man, he still, you know, has that ring IQ. So I think it's going to be a very calculating fight. Like a game of chess. I know you're a checkers man. Exactly. <laughs> um, also, you mentioned um, Derek Chisora. He said his fight announced as well, Joseph Park, in a rematch. Right. Um, with that one, how do you think I'm going? Do you feel this a rematch was deserved? Do you feel they need a rematch? Or because the world tied to this, they're all tied up. Is it good to see these top 10, 15? 20 I mean, points? listen, you got two guys who put on a good fight, uh, willing to fight each other again. You don't get that today in boxing. Absolutely. Um, the other heavyweight battle that everyone's talking about, October 9th, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, a trilogy. Firstly, do you feel the third fight is needed? No, I don't think it's needed. But uh, I think that. Um, is going to be a very interesting fight. You know, just like the second one was interesting, this one's going to be more interesting. For Wilder, should he lose again, where does it leave him? Where does he go from there? I mean, you, you, if you lose again, then uh, you just step outside the picture and look inside. 
I suppose in, in terms of that, he's already done that a little bit with the, the last fight. He's brought in Medic Scott. He's let out, out of the camp Mark Freeland. Um, just how much of a breath of fresh air will Medic Scott be? I know he's a good friend of Deontay's. It's hard to really say because in the gym, everything can flow in the gym. But when you get in that ring fight night, it's a whole different ballgame. I mean, for the fighter and the trainer. So you're going, you know, the, uh, um, but uh, not Malik, but Deontay's been there. I mean, uh, Malik has never been there as a trainer in a fight of such magnitude. So now, at, at, meaning that in this fight, he's got to maintain his uh, mentality as far as not getting caught up in the hype. He's got to stay focused, concentrate on the fighter, not get caught up in all the hoopla that's going on and all that. Can't do that. Because at the end of the day, win, lose, or draw, they're going to point the finger at the trainer. Absolutely. Do you feel it's potentially a disadvantage if they are friends? Could that scupper his nah, decision-making? No, nah, not really. No, um, because uh, they both want to win. You know, uh, Wilder has something to prove. And now Malik has something to prove because everyone's doubting him. So it could work in their favor. Absolutely. Um, we talk about heavyweights. Um, it's not really a heavyweight I want to talk about who was fighting. But Evander Holyfield uh, recently fought um, in whether it's an exhibition or not. I don't know. There's a bit of a question mark around that. But in terms of him, 58 years old, a year older than himself, getting into the ring. What do you make of that? All I can say is that I'm glad he didn't get hurt. And uh, the Florida, the Florida Athletic Commission, I'm surprised they that they okayed that fight. I'm surprised any commission would okay that fight. It's just, it's not right. It's, you know what I mean? I don't, you know, Evander Holyfield's a great champion, you know, and 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 everything. But even if it wasn't Evander Holyfield, if it was just a 58 year old guy who used to box coming back, trying to, you know. Relight that fire, which is not there, and for them to approve it, knowing that he doesn't have any. I mean, you know it from his last couple of fights. You know what I mean? So, and you still approve the fight. It's like, what the hell is happening in the boxing right now? Absolutely. Um, from a fighter's point of view, he's dedicated his whole life to boxing. It's all he knows. It gives him a purpose in life. Do you understand why Holyfield stepped back into the ring? Yeah. Yeah, uh, as well, no money. Um, but as far as him having that fire to say I'm gonna be champion again, he know that fire is not there. You know what I mean? But they say he got a great, good payday. So I'm not mad at him for that. But if you're gonna get a good payday, you make it an exhibition like Roy and Tyson did. I mean, Roy and Tyson, the whole world knew that that was gonna be an exhibition. They knew that no one was gonna win that fight. You know what I mean? So to build up a fight like that and put Evander in it, it's kind of, kind of, kind of fucked up. With that chucked in with the, the YouTube boxing, throw in the Oscar Valdez drug scandal, how much of a decline is boxing on, if at all? If it's going that way, it's fucked up. I mean, <laughs> Is you know the, what's saving us right now is that Canelo plant fight and the Crawford Porter fight. That's what's saving us. If those fights wasn't happening, we'd be in deep shit, man. Because you know they make it a mockery of the sport, and something has to be done, man. I mean, it's just it's getting ridiculous, and like you don't see NFL players coming out of retirement to play an exhibition game against YouTubers, do you? No. Oh. You know what I mean? Because the NFL's not going to allow it. Same with the NBA. They're not going to allow it. They're like, no. You know what I mean? So, so um, like I say, Roy and Mike Tyson let the world know it's going to be an exhibition. And when they went out there, that's exactly what it was. They had fun. These guys are risk getting hurt. And then if they get hurt, they hurt, you know what I mean? God forbid something bad happens. They're hurt for the rest of their life. And then when everyone's going to say, oh, well, you know, we didn't know he looked good hitting the heavy back. I can look good hitting the heavy bag right now. I mean, I can look good hitting the speed bag right now. That doesn't mean I can get in there and fight. You know what I mean, that game is over. You know what I mean? So, so I just, you know, like I say, I feel bad for Evander. 
You know, I still got love and respect for him, you know, uh, but I think that these commissions got to cut the bullshit, man. Is that who you point the finger at? You say it's got to stop. Is it the commissions? Well, if they don't approve the fight, there's no fight. What would you make of Triller, for example, who are putting on the YouTubers and the old timers? Look, everyone's out to make a buck, right? But they won't make the buck if you don't support it. If you support it, you know what I mean? They're going to continue to do it. So I'm hoping that this opens a lot of people's eyes. You know, it's like, yo, I mean, come on, Evander. I mean, yeah, you got Riddick Bo fighting Lamar Odom. I mean, come on, man. I mean, James Tony, Jeremy Williams. Oh my God! You know what I mean? It's like, what, what the hell is what's happening here? You know what I mean? I mean, I mean. So it's like, it's a case of, you know, um, uh, everyone seeing what Tyson does. Okay, wow, we can do that. But no, you're talking Mike Tyson, Roy Jones. Yes, we're gonna fight. We're gonna fight. They're letting you know what you're getting. So you expect that, but. The rest of these guys, man, you know, they, they way past their prime, man. Way past it. And, you know, Roy said, he goes, buddy, man, he said, Tyson touched me and it hurt. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, so a lot of these guys, man, you know, I just, I mean, look, we all, you know, everybody wants to make money. I understand that. But is it, is it worth your, your health, your life, you know what I'm saying? Your legacy. You know what I mean? Evander's got a legacy. I mean, there's other things he can do in boxing. He might not make $5 million a night doing it, but he can make a hell of a lot of money. You mentioned the health. As a fighter in their prime, they always say how dangerous boxing is. We've seen Gerald McKellen. We've seen Michael Watson. We've seen the life-changing and the damaging injuries that happen to them. It's changed their life for good. Why is that not enough? stop people getting in the ring at 15 years old, for example? Uh, some people still feel like they can they can pull that trigger one more time. I mean, they think I can I can do this one more time. And the reality of it is, no, that's it. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I try to get, you know, and I don't try to, let me rephrase that. Uh, and a lot of these fighters don't understand that. They think, yeah, I can, I can, I can do one more fight. I can make two or three million dollars. But then you win that, or you look halfway good in that, then you're gonna go into another fight. You know what I mean? And then before you know it, you know what I mean? You, you're worse than when you started. Absolutely. Buddy, appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, thank you.